science is possible for everyone. Do it scholars can tell you how. It's real helpful for kids like us with disabilities when teachers are flexible. It is very important to include every student in an activity, disabled, being disabled or not. Just help out, give information where needed. I don't, I don't appreciate secretive instructors very much. I want them to know that, um, that I can do anything. DOIT stands for Disabilities, Opportunities, Internetworking, and Technology. Students in the program learn to be successful themselves, becoming experts on their own accommodation needs. Then they share their experiences with others. Here, DOIT participants show how students with disabilities and science teachers can work together in learning partnerships, multiplying the possibilities for academic and career success. Students can help teachers to develop creative alternatives for gaining and demonstrating knowledge. First, we'll look at gaining knowledge. It's really important for a science teacher who has visually impaired students in their class to, um, first of all, describe anything that needs to be described. So if they draw something on the board or the overhead, describe it as best as they can and then provide the student with a copy of the drawing to either be drawn tactily or enlarged so that they can see it and see what the drawing looks like. The computer has made doing schoolwork a lot easier. The computer I use has a voice output. It also is helpful for doing research over the network. The instrument that I use in school to um, do my work is a magnifier and a binocular to see um, the blackboard and the overhead I won't be able to see well because of the light reflection so the overhead isn't really helpful. <laughs> it's helpful if the teacher explains what he or say what he or she why on the blackboard I have muscular dystrophy and I use blood print books to see the print better. When I'm in any class, uh, including science classes, I always inform the teacher or professor that, that I do indeed have a vision impairment. And so if I, they're not surprised if I ask for something a little different than, than normal. If they do have an extremely small handout, I will ask that it be enlarged. I have a hearing impairment. And in a science lab, I prefer written instruction from the teachers or on handouts and stuff so that I can visually see it and not have to concentrate so hard on listening and get every single step. I also like it when the teacher writes instructions on, a, on the blackboard or an overhead projector and it makes it a lot easier for me to understand what is going on in the class. Sometimes I need a sign language interpreter. A lot of times I use a FM system, which lets me hear the teacher only, and I have a receiver which goes directly into my hearing aids. I had a stroke which paralyzed me on the right side of my body, and just this whole thing affected my memory and just how to get concepts of things and stuff like that. <laughs> if, if, if a teacher could give me visual things to look at and if even touch. That helps me so much better. Lectures do not help at all because I, I, I need to see things and just that helps with the concepts. My disability is LD, which is a learning disability, and it affects me in that I'm a very slow reader. I read every single word individually and process it and so obviously the speed does not increase and so hopefully the computer can sort of take over my mother's job in that I can increase the speed that it reads to me and so I can increase the speed of my reading. When you have a disability like I have it's hard it's hard to write everything down that you need to write down. It would be nice if I could if there were a computer at my disposal that I could use to write things down with and that, that I could view things through instead of having to always have somebody pull something out for me or do something for me, I can just do it on my own. 
I'm very interested in space with the internet. I can access NASA's big computers and get pictures from their telescopes in space. The main point that I think is really critical for a science professor to know is that a lot of the adaptations can be done right within the laboratory itself and that the professor has the knowledge with a little extra effort to make those adaptations so that the laboratory is accessible. The teacher shouldn't feel like it's all up to them. It's very much a cooperation between the student and the teacher. There are many ways to gain information, but the most important element is good communication between teachers and students. Learning styles and accommodation needs vary. A few common adaptations for improving access to information include enlarged print and braille, an interpreter or FM system, visual aids or models, extra time to receive and process information, computer technology, and the internet. Once lessons are learned, students have to show that they understand the material. For students with disabilities, there can be challenges involved in demonstrating knowledge. Science labs are normally pretty difficult for me um, unless I can, they have a shorter workstation and um, like the microscopes can tip and whatnot. Like I've had to have a stool so I can get up up to the lab tables to work on the things or to wear an apron and I couldn't wear one so they had to staple and kind of hem up an apron so I could use but that's all it really I really required but often that's it's only little things that people require so they can participate just like anyone else. I'm an amputee and uh, the main advice I'd give to a science teacher is to put me with a partner when we do labs because of some of the things I can't do and they can help me out with it. I need less labs that deal with colors. Um, a lot of the labs say, you know, watch for the color change. <laughs> I can't do that. So change of shape or heat or texture, I can do easy. They would make you know, science a lot more interesting for me. The hardest part in the science lab is writing the information down about the lab and the lab results. It's better if I have time to go home that night and do that on my computer or have someone else write it for me. The computer helps me because it has a spell check and a grammar check and can be read easier than my handwriting because my handwriting is bad. I can't write at all with my hands. So I use a computer to write my papers and communicate to other people. A lot of the time I get my um, like worksheets and stuff like that for school on braille or on tape. And if I could get them over the computer, it would be a lot easier if the teachers would just send me, for example, over email a uh, worksheet. I could work on it with the computer and then send it right back. My disability is Lyme's disease, and it's affected my immune system and um, my energy level a lot. So it's been hard going to school, and in the past I've had to be homeschooled a lot. And about the only adaptation I need for a science lab would be um, flexibility in the scheduling and a flexible teacher, because I may need a different time than the class set time. I take at least twice as long. Whenever a teacher gives a quota of the amount of time you should spend on homework, I automatically double it because I know it'll take that long. In a written test or a lab situation, each student will have individual challenges involved in proving knowledge. Some common arrangements could include computer use, alternatives to standard equipment, alternative procedures, or flexible time arrangements. It just takes a little bit of creativity, patience, and common sense to allow every student to participate in class. A lot of the time, the student has to prepare ahead of time so that he or she knows 
what to expect and then to sit down one-on-one -on -one with the instructor and to go over the points and see how they can adapt the experiment ahead of time. And uh, it's important that uh, the professor tries to come up with ideas as well as the student. I can do it. <laughs> just be patient. I can do it and I really enjoy it. And so just be aware of what's there and work with it. And so far my teachers have been really great about that. I think it's very important that science teachers understand that people with disabilities can do science. We have the intelligence and the capabilities to do it. And it's important that we're exposed to science just like people without disabilities are so that we can better make choices about the rest of our life, like what career we want to go into and what we want to study. For more information, contact Do It on the World Wide Web, www.washington.edu slash doit, phone, voice, or TTY, area code 206-685-DOIT, address, Do It, University of Washington, Box 355-670, Seattle, Washington, 98195-5670. Director Cheryl Bergstaller. The creation of this videotape was made possible by a grant from the National Science Foundation. The University of Washington College of Engineering and Computing and Communications also contributed resources to this project. Copyright 1998, University of Washington.